Hello and welcome to the program that puts the spotlight on Africa's rich inventions and innovators, R&D Africa, on AAU TV. And my name is Lydia Nyame. In this episode, we traveled all the way to the Regional Center for Energy and Environmental Sustainability here in Sunyani to interview an inventor, and he's in the person of Dr. Mark Amo Boaten. Dr. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you and welcome. Thank you too. Well, Dr. Mark, tell us about yourself. Who is Dr. Mark Amu Barton? Okay, um, so I'm a lecturer at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Energy and Natural Resources. I'm also with ROCs and I head the Smart Energy Systems. My side that I'm a Ghanaian, yeah. So uh, if I'm right, you have spearheaded a number of innovations here at the center. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Okay, perfect. So can you run us through a few of these projects? Okay, so um, there are quite a lot of them. Um, one of them is the power tube, which we, we looked at the recycling of e-waste batteries and e-waste systems. So what we did was that we actually took this e-waste and converted them into a home backup system that can be used for homes and offices and you can get up to a week of power, backup power when things go off. Okay. In addition to, we have um, biodegradable plastics, which we created from cassava starch and cornstarch. Um, we have a new biodegradable plastic that we are working on, and that is from elephant grass. Okay. Elephant grass is actually a nuisance around Ghana. Find them on the street, so we've been able to create a new form of plastic from that one. Um, in terms of artificial intelligence, um, we have a system for detecting COVID and other related chest infections at a very high accuracy. So all you need is to take a chest x-ray. Then within three seconds, the AI can triage and tell you whether you have COVID-19 um, up to like 95% accuracy. Just three seconds? Three seconds. You don't oh, need wow. that much, yeah. Doc, tell us what instigated the start of this invention. Yeah, so um, this started with the Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize. Um, it was a global um, competition and the teams were supposed to build autonomous underwater systems that can survey and map the ocean um, at 4,000 meters depth and should be able to map around 500 kilometers square in less than 16 hours all by itself. So, okay. so I happened to be um, one of the teams and um, let's say the only team from Africa and we were able to get to the semi-finals but Unfortunately, we weren't able to raise funding to enough funding to build our system. So, and we, the competition has to be con continued. Okay, yes. Yeah, so we were looking around and realized that um, to do something locally using local resources that would be great. And at that time, we realized they had a couple of laptop batteries around. And so, okay, let's see if we can string this together because we are trying to build a 40 kilowatt hour system for our autonomous submarine. And the plan was that the system should be able to stay underwater for two weeks continuously, mapping um, the depths of the ocean. So that's how it started. So we string together a couple of um, um, these batteries, laptop batteries. Um, they actually went around, collected enough to build the system. Then after the competition ended, you know, the power was there. And one day there was blackouts at home. And I said, okay, we have all this power. Let's see if we could um, power the house. And, when we tried it, it worked, and that's how this started. Amazing. So you were able to come up with this through laptop batteries. How many of them are we talking about? Well, it's quite a lot. Yeah, because at the time we collected almost all the batteries we could find around. So that's like 10,000, 10, 20,000, 2,000? She be like, let's say around 20,000. Yeah, individual. But it, it were coming, so we went to almost every village. Yeah, and and when they they were waste because you know the um, this laptop repairs, this computer repairs, you know they've been buying them, and for some of the batteries that they bought them for, they, they are out of the system, and they have them lying around. So what they were doing was just burning them or just throwing them into the bin. So we actually went around collecting almost all that we could we could get. Yeah, so that's how it started. Okay, given that you had to collect that number of uh, batteries. I would want to know the, the, the number of weeks or months or years it took for the center to come up with 
such invention? How long was it? Well, building the initial prototypes um, they didn't take that long. Yeah, and we had people go into the field, so we're dealing with the the repairs, the computer repairs, and you know they, they were happy to sell it on because they were actually burning it anyway. So, and it, it created like some sort of a chain reaction. So they called their friend that hey, there's this guys who are looking for it. They'll just pick it up. So that's how it was easier for us to collect them. The transportation was uh, another thing that was because these batteries are quite heavy. Even though they are tiny, you can just pick them up. But when they come in their sacks and other stuff, they, um, it was actually an issue transporting them, but to be able to do that anyway. Okay, but Doug, I'm still concerned about how long you were able to come up with the innovation. Was it in the space of a year, six months, two years? Oh, it was like a couple of weeks, not that much. A couple of weeks, okay, that's amazing. Well, Doug, when exactly was it invented, the power tube? Um, that was like 2017. Yeah, during the competition, the Shell Oceans Discovery X Prize competition. Yeah. Okay, and then in total, how many researchers worked on it? Yeah, with the teaching assistant, we have about five. Doc, is the power tube already on the market? Is it being sold or you, you have just kept it at the center? Yes, yeah, so we have a couple of homes across Ghana that are actually using it in businesses. It's not, um, it's not skill, like it's still, let's say we are still at the pilot stage. So we have a couple of homes in Accra, um, Kumasi, Tema, and even here in Sunyane that are using it. Does the centre have any intention of extending this project to other centres, other universities? Yes, yeah, so there have been that discussion going on yeah, to see if other centres can actually come on board. Okay, and then who are the collaborators for this project? So um, I'm, I'm working on it, and Dr. Eric, Dr. Jim Fee, yeah, we are all connected. So. Uh, have you thought of sending the project to the Energy Ministry, given that this is an amazing project? Yeah, so we've actually been there, um, I think it was like last year or so, last two years, um, at the, the Renewable Energy Conference. So the Energy Commission looked at it and they asked us to go through the process of certifying and standardizing it. So that is also ongoing. Okay. Well, look, I'm, I'm much more concerned about how the power tube works. So if we could start with the demonstration to see how the system works. The, the laptop batteries, mm -hmm. um, um, the waste ones that we find, find around. So these are the ones we collect and yeah. So what is that when we take these batteries, we take time, take them out and Within these batteries, we have these cells in them. So this, for instance, will have about six of this. Which one has about six of this? The, the laptop battery, battery has yeah. about six of six, six of these, but yeah. Um, coincidentally, um, this happens to be the same batteries that are also being used in the electric vehicles and uh, okay. work here. And yeah, because um, their energy density is high and as well. So we take these ones from these, these cells, okay? Then we test them, we go to a whole, a whole lot of process like charging, discharging to find the ones that are still good mm -hmm. and can still work. Then we um, we put them together in this one. Initially, we're putting them in tubes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how okay. we, we create the mold. Um, we use the 3D printer to create these shapes. Okay. Then we, we pack them out. Then we stack them together like you could look at. This one is for a smaller version. Um, one of the models of the five kilowatt hour system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do this, then we have these cells. Then we join these cells together to build the entire system. So in the system, you have probably like, maybe you could have like 20 or 30 of these things. Okay. Jump together to give you that you know, most power that you have. Yeah. Okay. Then we, there are other things like different electronics and other stuff to, to control, make sure that it's safe and other stuff to make sure. Because uh, when you're dealing with batteries, the other risks associated with it. So you need to make sure that it's always operating very well. So yeah, we build all the electronics and other stuff to, okay. to put them together. So these are the, the basic cells um, which we put together to make the power tube. Yeah. Okay, and look, uh, what are these ones over here? Yeah, so this um, uh, a new prototype that we are working on, still based on these ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have um, like a five kilowatt hour system. 
of these cells in it. Yeah, so once it's charged, um, it goes through an inverter, then that can provide enough power for the entire home. Okay. Yeah, so we have these cells um, back in here. It's because we are trying a new system, a new design, that's why we are not in the case here. So we are, we are here, yeah. So it goes through this, then it comes to this. So what happens is that um, this is connected directly to the grid mm -hmm. and it acts like backup. So when power goes off, um, it switches on automatically mm -hmm. to this one, yeah. Okay. And currently I'm testing this at home. This can actually take my whole house for like two days. Oh, wow. Yeah, but even I'm, though... I'm sure our viewers would want to see how the power tube works. Because just saying that it can power your home when there are no lights is mere saying, unless of course they see how it works. Is it possible you can? The bus is designed to be automatically transfer power. Um, as you know, your systems are connected to it. So I think actually essentially goes off. Just automatically switches the battery systems, yeah. So now everything is running directly on these batteries, yeah. Okay, so the lights are still on and it's running. No one in this one. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, continue this one. Yeah, so that's also, um, you can essentially think of it like um, a poly tank. So we have poly tank at home for water. Mm -hmm. So when there's no um, water from the taps, we don't actually know because there's water in the poly tank. So, that's just like a similar concept, but for electricity. Mm -hmm. So when power goes off, it just switches automatically to this one. Okay, when there's power, then it comes back to charge, okay. charge it. Okay, so Doc, assuming you are ready to take the product on, on the market, how much are we looking at for one? Four. So um, the five kilowatt hour system, which I think for most homes would be ideal, um, we think the price range should be around 5,000 Ghana CDC, yeah, which essentially is way cheaper than if you are buying. Uh, yeah, because this can take, um, can go for, it depends on the energy use though, but it can go for quite a long time. Yeah, okay. yeah and, and Ghana here, because the uh, power situation is fairly better because um, we don't have power going off for like 24 hours and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I think I experienced one yeah, in Sunyandi, we had an issue. And I actually didn't know um, there was an issue. You know, when I earlier mentioned, uh, uh, when I asked about what instigated the start of this project, I actually thought perhaps the power outages in the country sort of influenced you to come up with this. Yes, so like the, the original idea was because of the Shell Ocean Discovery X price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then when we are, we are done and power went off, because we had a system lying down there, so we couldn't just throw it away. Mm -hmm. And we just tried powering everything at home from washing machine, micro, you know, it takes everything. It takes everything. Everything, everything. Okay. Yeah. It takes everything, yeah. Okay. Air conditioners, everything works. Yeah. Okay. So, Doc, how does this uh, system here contribute to the production of the power tube? Okay, so this um, is an industrial grade um, 3D printing machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, for most of the things that we do, like for the mold, as well as the electronics, uh, we do it with this uh, machine. Okay, so um, this does 3D printing as well as laser cutting and CNC. So, we like if you look at this. Ship. Um, this is a prototype. So, this is from wood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, cutting these ships, we use um, this printer because it has a CNC. So, we, can, we could actually mill any shape that we want. Mm -hmm. In addition, when it comes to um, some of the control systems like the electronics, um, we use, there are different heads for it. So, um, this, has a, this is a laser one. So, in building our PCB boards and other stuff, we use this to, well, once we design it, um, it's easier to prototype it, to do the, um, use the laser to do the PCB and other stuff. Then um, here is for the drilling and milling of the different shapes and other stuff. So there are different, uh, we have different drill bits. Um, when it's for the PCBs, we have the tiny ones for if you are drilling for resistors, the SMDs and other stuff, it's a fabrication lab, a mini fabrication lab, yeah. yeah. So this has helped us like in rapidly helping us um, build our prototypes. It makes it faster. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you want to make your PCB, um, you normally have to have your order it from China and 
it takes some time and because of COVID you now you, you spend some time a longer time but um, we can actually now fabricate almost anything that you want for here yeah, from here so um, the system works it's not with plastic we also work with metal steel able to mirror all those things to the design shape yeah mm -hmm. and we use it not just for the power tube but for other innovations as well yeah. okay well doc are these part of your inventions or you just what's it just to support what you do no so this uh, we purchase to support the system to make it faster okay we can build one but i think we needed the speed so we just bought this to make it faster okay and then in your earlier submission you said you could not complete the competition because of funding do you have enough funding now and um, the competition is over um we still don't have enough funding so we are hoping that maybe probably through some of the innovations we could raise funding to support other projects because the innovations are quite many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in Africa we need to be able to do our own stuff, you know, right. find our own local solutions that can actually help us. Okay. Well, but beyond funding, is there anything else you would need to support the project to, in order to get it out there? Yeah, so some of the things um, I find challenging here is uh, uh, should I say our intellectual property rights are not fully established? Yeah, so if I'm hoping that I've seen that there are steps being taken by various government to mm -hmm. to increase that protection. But I think once that is done, that will also help and also um, funding is the essential part. Yeah, okay. to help get some of these things out there. Personally, I believe that the challenges we find in Africa, um, we can through our own means, find solutions to them. But, um, um, I pray that the time will come that the environment will be so conducive that um, the whole world will rather run to Africa to find solutions to some of the things that we see here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doc, are you currently nurturing any of your students to take up this mantle? Yeah, so in, in my classes, I, I teach all my students mm -hmm. to try to be innovative. Um, and yeah, exceptional ones. Okay. So some are making headway. Some are making headways. Um, for instance, um, this year in my class, the civil engineering guys, you know, they were actually inspired that they actually um, built a whole drone system to solve different challenges, and that's they, what they had. They built the drone system from start to finish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and and they are using that um, to they are finding they they came up with the ideas, different ideas. Mm -hmm. And they are doing that as part of um, their examinations. Okay, they wanted that way because they, once uh, I think once you realize that some of these things can be done by ourselves, it's it creates a whole new world, a whole new imagination. So um, that's why I try to teach my students in all the things I teach. Okay. This has been an interesting and interactive uh, conversation with Dr. Amu Boatin here at our season Sunyani. And this has been R&D Africa. My name is Indiana Mel.